We want to solve this one by completing the square. We have 2y squared plus 12y plus 3 equals 0. So let's bring up the steps for completing the square. But here's the thing. These steps only work when a equals 1. And here our a value is 2. Right? Notice how there's no number. There's no a term out in front of this, this x. It's automatically 1. So in order to use completing the square, you have to have a equals 1. Right here we have a equals 2. Okay, not to worry, we can fix that. Simply divide everything on both sides by your a term, if it's not 1, and suddenly it will become 1. Right, so I'm going to divide everything by 2, look what happens. Divide by 2, divide by 2, divide by 2, divide by 2. Alright, I just divided both sides by 2. That leaves us with y squared plus 6y plus 3 halves equals 0. And now we are ready to proceed with step 1 because we are of the correct form up here. So that's an important point. Always make sure you have a equal 1 or your leading coefficient of 1 before starting this process. Otherwise the process won't work out and it'll just be a horrible mess. Okay, step 1, get the c term to the right side of the equal sign. So I'm subtracting 3 halves from both sides here. I'm going to leave some space. And the next step, y squared plus 6y equals negative 3 halves on the right. And now I'm taking my b term, which is here, 6. 6 divided by 2 is 3. And then I square that. 3 squared equals 9. So that's steps 2 and 3 here. Step 4, I add 9 to both sides. So plus 9, plus 9. As long as you add the same thing to both sides, you're not fundamentally altering the equation. Okay, well, the left side is now a perfect square, so let's write it as such. This is something squared, y plus 3. Right, because this is a squared plus 2ab plus b squared here, and then this is a plus b quantity squared. All right, well, on the right side, we need to do a little work with these fractions. Let's see here. I'm going to write this as 2 over 2 to get a common denominator. Right, doing that gives us, let's see, negative 3 plus 18 all over 2. So that's 15 halves. Right, so on the right side here, we have 15 halves. On to step 6, we take the square root of both sides square root of both sides. We are careful to add a plus or minus on the right side. That gives us y plus 3 equals plus or minus rad 15 over 2. Here we have a radical in the denominator. We have a rad 2 down here. Um, it's not mathematically incorrect, just sometimes it's considered bad form. So let's go ahead and get that radical out of there. I'm going to rationalize the, not the denominator by multiplying by rad2 over rad2. Alright, that is the trick to rationalize this denominator. So this gives us y plus 3 on the left still equals plus or minus rad30 all over 2. And finally, subtracting 3 from both sides gives us y equals minus 3 plus or minus rad30 over 2, which is a perfectly fine answer. Some people like to write this all over a single denominator. I'm going to multiply by 2 over 2. The, the answer in the back of the book might also say something like this. So we have negative 6 plus or minus rad 30 all over 2. Let's try another one. Here we have 4x squared minus 2x plus 5 equals 0. And again, we're going to use completing the square on this. Here are the steps. Make sure you memorize these or, or at least internalize them. It's not really so much that you memorize it step by step, but it's more like you practice enough of these to where you develop an in internal kind of intuitive sense of how to proceed with completing the square. And again, this will be useful in future sections as well. It's not just this section. Okay, well, this only works when a equals 1. So we have a problem before we even start this. Note that you must have, must, B1 here. Okay, if you don't have one there, 
Don't even start with completing the square. Um, you have to do it. Okay, so let's do that. How do we get a 1 here? We divide everything by 4. So I'm just going to divide both sides by 4, like so. Clean things up a little bit. It makes the first term really nice, but it makes the other terms a little bit messy. So this becomes x squared minus 1 half x plus 5 fourths. Okay, so that's going to get ugly. No problem. Equals 0 on the right. Now we're ready to start with the steps. Okay, we have it in the right form. We have a equals 1. So let's start here with step 1. Get c to the right side. Okay, so we're subtracting 5 fourths from both sides. That gives us x squared minus 1 half x equals negative 5 fourths. Okay, now for step 2, we take our b term, which here is negative 1 half, and divide it by 2. Okay, I'm just going to take the 1 half. It doesn't matter if we bring the negative along or not, because we're going to square it, and divide by 2. Anytime you have a fraction over a single number in the denominator, so here I'm doing a over b all over c, you can just bump that fraction down a layer. So this is, becomes a over b times c. You just think of this as bumping down one layer, right, to give us a over bc. Why is that the case? Well, just so in case, well, just in case you don't believe me, let's see. This is really a over b over c over 1, which means we multiply by the reciprocal times 1 over c, which gives us a over b c. Right, you can go through all of this every time, but really in practice, you just bump that top one down one level, boom, the denominators combined by multiplication. So back to our example, when we divide this one by 2, we're going to bump it down one level, and this becomes 1 fourth. Okay, so that takes care of step 2. Step 3 is square the result, so we're going to take this 1 fourth and square it to get 1 sixteenth. And then step 4 says add that to both sides, plus 1 16th, plus 1 16th. I'm going to clear out some room here. Step 5, write the left side as a perfect square. Okay, so this is something squared. To figure out what goes here and here, we just take the square roots of the first and last term. So the first one is x, the last root one is 1 fourth, and then we take the sign from the middle term. So x minus 1 fourth squared there on the left, on the right, we're going to need a common denominator. I'll multiply by 4 over 4 here. This gives us all over 16. We have negative 20 plus 1 over 16. That gives us negative 19 sixteenths. All right, so that's going to be on the right-hand side of the equals here, negative 19 sixteenths. All right, step 6, square root property to solve. I'm taking the square root of both sides. I'm careful to add on the plus or minus. That gives us on the left x minus 1 fourth, the squared and the square root undo each other, equals plus or minus negative 19 inside the square root is i rad 19. That negative, you can think of that as coming out of the square root as an i, and then all over 4, right, because square root of 16 is 4. Finally, we solve for x by adding 1 fourth to both sides, so 1 fourth plus or minus i rad 19 over 4. And here I'm resisting the temptation to write this all over a single denominator of 4, because we want to have this broken up into a plus or minus b i form. There's almost like a wall here between our reals and our imaginaries. You don't want to combine them by putting them over the same denominator or something like that. So I'm going to leave them separate the way the answer is right here.